Hello you gorgeous person and welcome to this full unboxing setup and hands-on tour of Lenovo's new Yoga Book C930. Very intriguing device this, it builds itself as a dual display laptop with e-ink so it's got a standard display and a secondary e-ink display which can be used as a keyboard, it can be used just as a tablet style device in order to you know read books and magazines things like that uh, so let's check it out. Now it's a Windows 10 device as you might expect runs uh, on an Intel Core chipset. You can pick it up in a couple of different SKUs. The cheapest SKU uh, starts at £1,100. This certainly isn't a cheap device by any means um, and this is actually a 1300 version SKU of it with an Intel Core i5 chipset. I really really must stop biting my fingernails because every single time I do an unboxing it takes me about half an hour just to get the thing out. Right there we are. There is the actual yoga book itself. Let's just set that aside for a second and see exactly what else you get in the box along with it. So in compartment number one a plug, exciting times. And this side you get the cable, unsurprisingly. Well, this bit apparently is a big fat load of nothing. Uh, in here we get a porky pin device because it does actually take uh, SIM cards. It is a SIM compatible device. And of course you've got your quick start guide as well. And in this I'm presuming from the little icon that it's the uh, precision pen. Yep, there we have it. So this is Lenovo's own powered stylus. As you can see there, it takes a dinky little battery triple A, I believe it is. No, quadruple A, sorry. And there is the actual pen itself. Itself. Let's just prize this one out. I believe the pen is an optional accessory. Uh, you can either get the uh, the Lenovo Yoga Book with or without the pen. I'm assuming you just yank this uh, this end bit off. Doesn't seem to twist. There we go. Okay chunk. So Windows 10 convertibles and two-in-ones, things like that, are actually quite common these days. So if you are looking for something that's sort of a, a combination tablet slash laptop, there are plenty of different options around. This is obviously one of the more expensive ones, along with the likes of uh, the Surface Pro from Microsoft. Quite a funky design, as you can see there. It's nice and slender. I believe it's about a centimetre thick at its thickest point. And uh, overall, uh, the back of the box says 1.4 kilos. It does actually feel pretty light. Absolutely no worries if you're going to be sticking that in a fairly compact backpack, lugging it around all day. There's very little weight to it whatsoever. The yoga book only comes in one colour option, and that is the rather sexily titled Iron Grey. Uh, maybe only sexy if you're turned on by things like Game of Thrones. It's definitely got a very business-like appearance to it. Uh, there's no vibrant hues or anything like that. No particularly sexy design. It's basically just the Lenovo Brandon down below and then the nice, nice sort of matte finish. The hinge looks very funky indeed though, check that bad boy out. So basically you can open it on up like a book and it just keeps on twisting around and then you can use it in a tablet style fashion either with the main 10.8 inch display or with that secondary e-ink display. As you can see there it does have a built-in fingerprint sensor as well for a bit of your security. And I believe you can use the pen on either the e-ink display or the standard display as well. So it has two USB Type-C ports. They're USB 3.1. You don't get any Thunderbolt action or anything like that. You get one around this side here and then another round one around this edge as well. So at least you've got one on each side. Got your power button, your volume controls, you've got a speaker on both edges as well. And then last but not least, you've got your SIM card slot as well. And I believe that also takes micro SD memory cards. Let's just poke it on open and see what you get. So there you have it. So yep, so room there for a micro SD memory card and also a SIM card. Right, we've got the yoga book plugged in. Let's see if we can get it powered up. Gotta say, I've not been a massive fan of typing on flat keyboards in the past. It's always nice to have some sort of force feedback. So even the likes of the Surface Pro, they have quite a flat keyboard, but they do still have physical keys that you actually push in, so you do get some kind of feedback from them. Oh, shut up, Cortana. Right, it's just gonna set up that fingerprint sensor. It'll just mean you don't have to enter your password every time that you uh, wanna unlock your laptop, which is always good. So it's uh, actually fully flush the sensor with the rest of the panel. It's having trouble recognizing me apparently, that's a bit worrying. Just give that a bit of a wipe, just make sure it's nice and clean. No, still having trouble recognizing me apparently, okay. Let's hope that isn't gonna be a consistent issue. Just going to try unlocking the yoga book now using that fingerprint sensor. So just quick tap of the power button and then if we try scanning. Couldn't recognize the fingerprint, great start. They mean, okay, and now the pin is required to set in. Brilliant, let's try this again. Couldn't recognize the fingerprint, great. So the fingerprint sensor does not seem the most reliable that I've tested. Right, so we're all set up and we're into Windows 10. Now when you're in this laptop mode, you've got a variety of different functions that you can uh, actually use this e-ink screen for. As you can see, first of all, you are in standard keyboard mode. Reaching a sort of decent speed with it. Um, yeah, not as fast as I would be on an actual physical keyboard, but not too bad at all. 
Things are a little bit squished down this left hand side, the likes of the shift key and the tab key absolutely <laughs> properly crushed against that edge. And of course you do get this uh, this rather squished return key over here as well, but at least it's a, a double raw effort. And you do weirdly get a uh, touch pad as well. If you just give that a little tap, then that turns into a touch pad complete with left and right click controls as well. But it's a full touch screen, so why wouldn't you just use that instead? Much easier. Right, so this is now in e ink notes mode. So uh, we're just gonna get a brief tutorial. Let's go. As you see here, you've got a choice of different pens that you can use. You've got your eraser, your screenshot functionality, copy paste, all the kind of stuff you would expect from a basic sketching effort. Your e ink notes are automatically saved, which is always great because I'm always forgetting to save stuff. So you can actually toggle it uh, to be used with either the e ink screen or the main screen and how you do that is just with a quick push of this bottom button as you can see they do actually have a little light hidden away in that first door of Lenovo as well to just indicate that you have swapped between the two so let's just give it a go I'm not exactly the world's greatest artist as you may be able to tell now say hello to Danny everyone and if you press down this top edge of the pen that gets it into a razor mode so we can now get rid of bits of Danny if we like there's his stupid face going into oblivion not really any better never mind Let's give him some crazy hair, there we go. And then you can copy all of this by holding down the other edge of the pen instead and then just select him. There we go, the image has been copied. So I want to enter keyboard modes. And then if we just select paste, there we go, there is Danny in all of his glory. Uh, so we can, as you can see, you can easily scribble notes, uh, do a little drawing, whatever you want to do, and then copy it and paste it into any application that you want, nice and quick and easy. Now the main screen is a 10.8 inch IPS touchscreen. It's a 2560 by 1600 pixel resolution, so nice and crisp. Uh, so no matter what you want to do, if you want to watch a bit of video, if you just want to browse the web, get some uh, creative apps on the go, it should be absolutely fine for that as you can see there viewing angles are absolutely fine on top brightness it is absolutely searing just tested that no problems whatsoever and of course it's fully precision pen compliant too and it's got a bit of netflix on the go a bit of obligatory cute animal action as you can see there nice crisp clear picture highly detailed looks absolutely stunning and looks like nice realistic visuals as well those vivid hues are coming out nicely but they don't appear boosted in any way it looks very very natural so definitely great stuff if you want to be uh, checking out some movies on the go things like that as you can see quite thick bezels surrounding the screen though it's definitely not one of those displays that fills the panel all in all those stunning stuff and then if you just want to do something simple like read a book or browse a magazine you've got that e-ink display instead it's windows 10 home running on here so you don't get any crappy windows 10 s uh, weirdness or anything like that so you can download whatever you want uh, from the internet within good reason of course so for instance i'm just going to get a bit of google chrome on the go now, actually running the show is an intel core i5 7Y54. You can get it in a Core M3 version as well, the more basic model, which still costs you £1,100, so still quite expensive. At this sort of price point, it's definitely competing with the very best convertibles and two-in-ones out there. You only get four gigs of RAM in here as well, and it's DDR3 RAM, so quite limiting as far as the actual specs are concerned, considering that high asking price. As for the storage, you get a choice of either 128 gig or 256 gig SSD. Uh, so I've only just started setting this up as you can see I've got the 256 gig model but only 209 gigs of that is actually free to begin with but at least you do have that micro SD memory card support as well. Just going to download some Steam and get some gaming on the go see how that Core i5 chipset and mighty 4 gigs of RAM handles all of that. It's also worth mentioning it's a 4650 milliamp battery inside as well. Lenovo quotes 9 hours of general use per charge. Um, of course if you're just going to be using that e-ink display to read books, magazines, things like that you'll get much longer life at least so if you are going to be doing a lot of reading on the go and you fancy a nice big screen in order to do it this is probably a pretty decent option. All right, I've just downloaded Rise of the Tomb Raider so just going to do a quick bit of benchmarking with this and see what kind of results it turns out. Certainly the interface seems uh, uh, not the smoothest so this will be interesting to see. So as you can see there unsurprisingly the yoga bucket is struggling somewhat with the Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark and a very stuttery frame rate indeed about one frame per second by the looks of it. Uh, I'd say not, not exactly a massive shot given the lack of memory and uh, the Core i5 chipset and of course it's just basic integrated graphics as well there's no dedicated GPU on there. So yeah there's the final rather damning result. Average frames per second of just two or three. So yeah if you want to be doing a bit of gaming maybe avoid the yoga book unless it's just very basic simple 
uh, maybe a bit of retro game and something like that. So there you have our full unboxing tour of Lenovo's YogaBook C930. It's a very flexible device, you know, the e-ink screen gives a, uh, a great degree of extra usability there. Uh, it could be an alternative to a Kindle, albeit a very expensive alternative. The design is definitely very neat indeed. Love the 360 degree hinge and everything else. But of course that price point is quite a lot to swallow, especially given the fairly basic specs. So you're tempted to buy the Lenovo YogaBook C930. Stay tuned, I'm hoping to get a full in-depth review on the go in the next sort of week or so. Be great to hear your thoughts down below and don't forget to pog subscribe and ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers everyone, love you.